hello stampers it's Faye from Faye's Stampin Studio uh, thank you for joining me today and today I'm going to show you a card that is a fancy fold a flip-flop fold is what I've called it now I got the idea from Karina Chin uh, a demonstrator um, from Edmonton so if you've seen her any of her videos you'll know her well but anyways so these are the items that I'm going to be using I'm using the hand pen petals as well as the coordinating dies penned flowers and I'm going to use stitch so sweetly dies black and also the basic borders dies for the envelope so I'll share that with you in a minute. And yeah, so the new, I just wanted to show you this, the new um, stamp sets that are photopolymer, they are coming and you can just pull, place your stamps directly onto the stamped image here then it's easy for you to tell whether there's anything missing or not so as you can see there's a few out of here and those are what I'm going to use in tonight's tutorial so but for now I'm just going to move that out of the way and I'm going to show you what I uh, the sample of what we're making but again I'm making it differently I use the wildly adorable stamp set it is so sweet sweet little one little little unloved somebody loves you and welcome baby and wildly adorable so i thought that was pretty cute so i decided i needed a baby card so i gave it a try with this flip flop fold i'm not sure if that's the name for it or not but that's what i've given it so anyways now I didn't tell you, I have been having trouble with the audio on my Facebook Lives lately, so if this audio is not working, I will upload it to YouTube and through there. And if you're watching, um, please give it a like, comment, and share. And if you're watching it on YouTube, please um, subscribe to my YouTube channel. So I'd appreciate that a lot. So anyway back to the card uh, that we're going to be making. So this is it, and on this, this is the sample. Uh, I've used the, the designer series paper called uh, Pattern Party Designer Series Paper. Couldn't remember what it was called. Pattern Party, and that's a hostess gift. So you can get that with your hostess rewards. It's got uh, 48 sheets in of 12 by 12 paper so you get a huge stack of designer series paper and they're all really quite beautiful so this little fellow I um, colored him with our Stampin' Blends in pale papaya and I did this and what I did here is I saw that another demonstrator do this and I can't recall who it was this is our this is our woven ribbon and it's actually a half an inch wide and so what I did was I took my scissors and I just cut it right down the middle it makes a really lovely um, a small tiny little bow so yeah I really like that and then I used some of the gems uh, I can't remember which ones uh, I think they're called oh I don't know elegant oh no champagne rhinestones so this is where the element of surprise comes in, you guys. It's so cute. So then it opens this way. And I just I just stamped a couple little um, images on the designer paper. And then you pull it open and it opens like that. And it's really quite, quite easy to um, get that fold. So I hope that you enjoy uh, my video tonight. And I will share with you what we're doing. So first off, we need a card base. I'm using Just Jade for this card tonight and it's five and a half by ten and a half and I've scored it at four and a quarter, five and a quarter, and six and one quarter. And then you'll need a coordinating 
piece of um, cardstock to coordinate with your designer series paper. And I've chosen the So Saffron, and it's four by five and a quarter. And then you're going to need the Hand Pen Designer Series paper, and it's three and three quarters by five. And I all and then I used a three and a half by three and a half inch piece of basic white to stamp the image on to it. And I also used a piece of well, about a two by th and three quarters by four inch piece, and I used the so stitched so sweetly dies for that one. Now you can use whatever die you know you want or whatever shape you want. You don't necessarily have to have that, so you'll adjust your cardstock size accordingly. And then this is just a couple of pieces of scraps that I thought I might use for a um, a banner or something to this uh, line. So, and then the inside is. So then we'll need the pieces that, that um, do the, um, then we're going to need these pieces here and you need three of those. So um, first off, I'll give you this one here. You need three pieces of the coordinating cardstock and I chose the So Saffron again, but you could have gone differently and they are all one and three quarters of an inch by four inches. So again, you need three of those. And then I've got the hand pen designer series paper and it's one and three quarters by three and three quarters and I've got one of it and the one and I'm going to put it so that it coordinates with the front piece and then a different design which it just so happens this is the flip side of, of that one and it's one and three quarters by three and three quarters as well so and you need two of those and then you need a piece of four by five and a quarter of basic white for the inside. And now this is where, oh, I forgot this piece here. And then this is a piece of the basic white one and three quarters by three and three quarters of an inch. And then this is where the, the basic border dies come in. I really like those. So all I did to make this, you guys, was I cut a piece of designer paper three inches by five and three quarters of an inch, and I laid one of those basic border dies across the middle of it, cut it, and I've adhered one piece to the front of my envelope and the second piece to the top flap. Uh, I put it on the top flap because it was um, the flowers were going the right direction. So this cardstock was a little bit directional. So isn't that just absolutely lovely? I know I'm going to get a lot of use out of those basic dies. That's for sure. Okay. I need a little sip of water here. So I think we'll start off with, we're going to start off with these two pieces, I believe. So the five and a quarter one is going to be a mountain fold. And you'll want to bring in your um, bone folder or some other object to um, bur burnish that well. And then this other, the other two are also, they're going to be scored the opposite direction. So, so then your card will open like this. It's going to look like this. Kind of a W, I guess you would say, in there. Um, yeah. Okay, so that's that piece. And now these two pieces, we can adhere our designer series paper to the front of our card stock um, and front to the front of this piece. And I'm going to use my stamp and seal for the card tonight. And you'll have to pardon me if I get my head in above there. Man, it was a hot day today here in Saskatchewan. 
We need rain here in this area so badly. So now we are, I'm going to adhere this to the front of the card base as well. Well, that's just not quite as square as I'd like to see it on there. I don't know if my, I must have scored it a little bit off because it can, okay. So you want to um, just adhere that on there like that. Push it down good. And then I guess the next thing we're going to do is going to do some stamping. And for this one, I, I'm just going to pull in this little cushioning. This is just a piece of foam from the dollar store that I grabbed. I've kind of got my paper piercing mats tied up. I've got my, my room all set up. I have a, I have a bingo class coming up on Monday. Monday night, so I've got my, I started setting things up so I don't have anything else going on. So I hate to be, I hate being rushed when it comes to that stuff. So, so you want to stamp up that uh, image well, and then just hold it down on this for a few seconds, give the ink time to transfer over, and there is your image. And then I, I ended up doing it so that I'm going to use the Highland Heather on this particular piece, but I need to stamp off, which I forgot to have a piece for that. I want something small. all kinds of scrap paper but there I did a, I did actually do a couple of these before and I wasn't just a hundred percent sure on on them see this is full strength Highland Heather just Jade and I used actually I had used Daffodil Delight on that but I just found it a little brighter. I wanted a little softer. I wanted the tones to be a little more muted. So then I stamped off and I did use the So Saffron this particular time. So that's what I decided I would do. So these are what you call two-step stamps. So all you have to do is ink it up well and we're going to stamp off on your scrap paper once and then you're going to just pop it up over top of it. And these are like a watercolor look. So they're not meant to be right in the, um, to be right filled up with everything. So that's that one. And now this one is, this one is so saffron. And we're going to do the same with it. I think I'll, well, I, actually, I'm not sure if I want to stamp it off or not. It's pretty pale, but I think I will. So, and I should have figured out which angle this was at first because sometimes by the time I get the... See, our kind of... See, look there, that's the, where I want it. So then I'll know where to stamp. Hold it down on there, and there it's that one. And then the last one is our just shade for the leaves. I'll do the larger leaves first. And again, we're stamping off. Um, and there's a few of them, so. It, it looks like there's lots to it, but it, it, it stamps up very quickly. 
And one more here. And, well, I think that one's too big. I'm going to use the smaller leaf for this other one. And then it won't overlap quite so much into there. And then here, I'm gonna turn that this direction. Oops, I forgot to, I forgot to stamp off, but it's not too bad. Just a little bit darker on there. And then, and then we would pull out the die and run it through the big shot. And I won't pull my big shot in tonight because I've made this. So this is the one that we're going to use from it. Just move that out of here, out of my way again. So this is the one, and, but I thought I might like to spruce that up a little bit with some, some of our Wink of Stella, and I'm just going to um, give it a little bit of bling by coloring over top of it. And I'm not sure if you'll be able to actually see the, the glitter or not. Wink of Stella, if all else you can, pails you can use Wink of Stella on <laughs> everything. So that's the Wink of Stella. I don't know if you can see it. Maybe my Wink of Stella didn't work very well. But anyway. And then I've got this piece. And I'm just going to uh, put this on here somehow. I think I do it like that. Or we can do, I think I like it this way on this one, actually. I don't think I'll put, I'm going to adhere this one directly onto the card. I believe is what we'll do. I'm going to put it just slightly over to the right and maybe up a little higher than not. And this I'm going to use dimensionals on it. I like to give it that extra dimension with a bumping, bumping it up. So we're going to use our Stampin' Dimensionals here. And maybe just one more in here. And this is where your take your pick tool comes in handy. You can just stick them and give it a little flick and they'll come off. Well, usually they come off. Not always, I guess. to just stick that right there like that I think and now we've got to make our greeting for that piece uh, what was I thinking hey I'm gonna say congratulations I think and I don't have it on the block yet so usually with these guys the best way to do put them on is just is to just drop them on your surface and then pick them up. Sometimes if you try to put them on, you give them, they get on there a little crooked because you've, um, you've got a little bit of a twist in it. So we're going to use black, our memento black for that. We just had grad, grade 12 graduation in town today. There, it was quite, they, this, they um, broadcasted it as live um, and the kids were on a, a flat deck trailer outside. They had some pretty decorations in the background. They did their awards and what they do it's a very small graduating class. There was only seven kids in it. <laughs> so pretty small. So everybody knows everyone real well. And ah, what do you think there? 
or somewhere else. Ah, debating here. Now, I think we should put a little piece of um, this ribbon on there. If I can get it opened, I will. It's taped shut. When I do this, I usually like to just tie two little bunny ears and um, pull them through. This ribbon ties quite easily because it's soft and it's pretty flexible. So I was going to tie this little bow and then I'll untie it. Get my ribbon cutting scissors out. I try not to use them for anything else, but sometimes I forget and grab the wrong scissors. So this here is our one quarter inch crinkled ribbon. And it is so versatile because you can uh, do, do so many different things. This is what I like about it is I can use my Stampin' Blends, which I am going to use. I'm going to use the Dark So Saffron. It colors the ribbon beautifully. So I'm going to just use it on here. I think I'll do it solid. So I, yeah, you just have to color it picks up the color really well and you only have to do the one side it soaks right through and it dries pretty really quickly because they are alcohol based uh, blends so now see if I can make that bo bunny bows again and get a nice see Oh, sorry, I'm pretty quiet when I'm concentrating here. <laughs> I can't think and, and I can't think, concentrate and talk both at the same time. It's just one of those things. I'm just not that good at that. Okay. Just have to decide where I want to put the, everything, that's all. mind that I think I'm going to go with that and I'm just going to use my fingernails quickly on here and pop this on here and I'm going to use a mini glue dot to attach that little bow I think we'll pull out some jewels as well I like to use those jewels then usually I try to decide which side looks better for the knot. We're gonna go with that side there. And I'm just gonna pop that up there. Or maybe just a little lower. <laughs> I'm okay with it hanging over the words. Okay, now we're moving on into the inside. Okay, first we can adhere this, uh, well, first I want to stamp on it. I don't want to, want to, um, so there's a couple places that we're going to stamp. So, well, no, anything is possible. Anything is possible, but I want to. I think I'm. I am going to put that. I think on to my basic white here. I believe I think that's where I want to put that. We're going to use the memento black again and I went and put my 
little cushiony thing away, so I am just going to take a chance. I guess if this doesn't work, I'll um, turn it over. Turned out okay. Doesn't always work so good, though. We're not always that lucky to get them to do that. Okay. All right. I think I'll have to think about what I want to put on this particular piece. So I think I'm going to just put it in and hope for the best when I stamp it that I don't mess it up. I normally like to stamp everything. Stamp it before you adhere it because paper's got two sides, so it doesn't matter how much you stamp, you still can make a mistake and be unhappy with the results. So, two of these I'm going to put Two of them, okay, one of them, I, I'm gonna do the single one first. One of them I want like this on here. Sorry, I might be out of the view here. And then, um, and the other two I'm going to put on with the Highland Heather and the White Leaf showing. Just make it a little different. So now you can see we're got we're gonna these are gonna go on, they'll be looking like this. So this piece here, I am putting it on this side. got to make sure I put it up the right direction so that one's directional too so hopefully I'm doing this right telling you guys the wrong way I'd be I'll be annoyed that happens okay so we're getting down and this is where you, we need our tear and tape so, and we have to put it on. And this isn't super wide, so what I did is I used two layers of it, two rows of it, so. I like to burnish it good there too. That sometimes helps to get these to lift up. So these you can just push them down onto themselves out of the way when they're too long. But I always find it's nicer to have them a little long than too short. So this first one, we're going to line it up with the edge of that white layer underneath. We want to hide it. Okay. And put that down like that. And we're going to do the same with this other piece. Put some tear and tape on there. Another piece of tear and tape. This tear and tape's a little bit stronger than the other adhesive. Probably could have used our Stampin' Steel Plus, I guess. That would have probably worked quite well as well, so. Okay, well, this is what I'm using, so. I have too many pieces of things laying around here. And the one thing that we do need to be sure of is that... Um, now, this piece will go... It goes in here like this or like this um, I think it goes on this it goes on this side actually so 
So the tear and tape on this one goes on this end here. This piece is going to fit just in here, and it, you want it so that it's, oops, oops, gotta get it in straight too. This one is a little bit more of a, of a challenge to get it where you want it. It needs to go up slightly. The reason is, is if you don't get them right in the center, then when they, when you go to flip them open, they kind of bind a bit, like here. Oop. Oh, I'm glad that's the right way up. So that kind of binds, would bind if it wasn't um, just right. And I, we could stamp something on there, but I kind of like it that way. It's just a little more, just shows off that pretty designer series paper. So I think that's everything for tonight. So again, Please like and share, comment, and I'll get back to you with any um, replies. And if you're watching this on YouTube, please subscribe to my YouTube channel. And we'll see you again real soon, if not next week. Okay, thanks. Good night, everybody. Bye.